So we already know that Melee is a good build on high level Insanity in Mass Effect Andromeda, but what about low level? Is there any possibility to be done on low level as well? Well, a lot of you guys have been asking me to do a low level Melee build, so I did just that for the past few hours or so I've been playing and leveling up using exclusively a Melee build, specifically a Vanguard build, and it's quite similar to the high level one that I've made, but there are a few choices here and there that will be different from the one that is on high level because of the simple fact that you will need a little bit more survivability so this one is going to be a little bit more different but the core of the build is still going to be the vanguard and i'm going to go over the skills right now and i'm going to show you exactly what you need and you know in the similar fashion just like before i'm now currently level 24 now i have leveled up a bit from the previous videos so as you can see here we're going to use a mixture of charge annihilation and energy drain as a third skill. Now, you might ask why I need so many shield generating abilities like the charge and the energy drain. And to be honest with you guys, early level, you're definitely going to need as much survivability as possible. And going with a full glass cannon early on is really not an option, especially with this one, which is really up close and personal to the enemy. You're going to be up in their face 24 seven with this one. And the way I made this is that you can also combo detonate enemies. So let's go ahead and start off with the abilities. So in the combat tier, I didn't pick any active ability for now. It's just that I don't have enough skill points to do that, so I had to prioritize here and there. But I did pick these two passives over here. So as you can see here, there are quite a lot of bonuses that help me. So at rank 2, I receive melee damage bonus. At rank 4, I receive 100 damage resist while evading. And you're going to evade quite a bit. And 100 resistance is insanely high and we're going to stack up quite a lot on resistances in rank 5 the aerial melee is definitely helpful it increases the area of effect of the melee and it's quite useful because if you find yourself jumping in the air and you can just press the melee button and when you land on the ground the enemies will be mini stunned if you will and it's definitely good versus shields as well but the best one in the combat tools is the martial arts perk this one makes it so that every time I attack an enemy or kill an enemy I would receive damage bonus to my melee this is one of the most important skills over here actually when it comes to Vanguard and when using melee exclusively you will have to stack quite a lot of passives so that's what I'm trying to do here in combat fitness the first two rank are really good because they increase my survivability a lot and in rank 4 I went with the health regen cap it's really useful early on it increases your regeneration so that is helpful but the reason I picked it is mostly so I can have 27 points in the combat tree so I could get the next level of Vanguard. Going over Biotics, Charge is going to be the main ability over here. As always, you're going to want this to be upgraded to full. And in rank 6, the only one that I'm going to go over is the one that increases your damage resistance, your shields, and overall damage by 35%. I find this perk to be so good, it's really hard to pass. Even though the Shock Trooper might be appealing, I would definitely recommend Bastion over it anytime, any day. The next ability over here that we're going to go over is Annihilation. So the reason I'm picking this one is because it primes targets for detonations, but it also applies some cool debuffs. Now in rank 4 I went with the recharge penalty. Um, normally Annihilation when it's activated gives you a little bit of recharge penalty, so I wanted to reduce that as much as possible. In rank 4 I picked the damage attractor. This is one of the reasons I picked Annihilation as a matter of fact. It just debuffs all the enemies by 20% and you can do more damage on them and it's really noticeable, trust me. And in rank 6 of course I picked the draining field this perk gives me more shields back every time I kill an enemy which is affected by annihilation and since I can extend the annihilation to have such a huge range it's going to be tremendously helpful the vortex one is just not a preference of mine in any circumstance whatsoever I find it more of annoyance than anything and of course I have invested in some passives over here especially the offensive biotics this one increases the biotic power damage the recharge speed as a matter of fact rank 2 and 4 
both increase the biotic recharge speed. In rank 3 I get some detonator damage and in rank 5 I get a defense debuff by another 20%. So this one stacks with what Annihilation has. It's really hard not to pick this one as a matter of fact. And I didn't pick anything in the rank 6 but I am going to pick one as soon as I level up and you will really want the biotic warrior rank here because it's super important. It increases your melee damage even more and uh, since we're playing a melee build that is exactly what you want. Um, I also went for barrier because it gives me more shields and more regeneration so that is definitely something that I needed and in the tech tree I went with energy drain and I only spec'd it up to rank 5 for the extended drain. This one makes it so that energy drain is now both a combo detonator and a primer and it really ties in nicely with annihilation. You also have some bonus damage because of that and given the fact that now you have two sources of regenerating your shields you're going to have a lot more survivability and we're going to extend it even more. Eventually I'm going to want to invest in team support because the rank 6 life support gives me HP regen every time I'm killing a foe so I'm definitely going to want to go into this but I think I'm going to be able to do that only by level 30 or so. But still this build is viable even around level 20 and that is basically it. Now I'm going to go over the inventory and I'm going to show you what you will need in order to achieve this. I'm using a mixture of remnant armor and the hyper guardian armor chest. The reason I'm picking only the chest from the hyper guardian one is because it gives me a lot of survivability and it increases the melee damage by quite a large margin. So 30% melee damage is crazy good this early on. Actually it's good no matter the level you pick. Now the reason I went with the remnant heritage armor instead of a full hyper guardian build is because the damage resistance is actually very good. I would even go ahead and say that it's quite overpowered. So 5% damage resistance is the equivalent of putting another 5% onto your HP and shields at the same time and it gives you way better survivability than going with shields or HP buffs alone. And someone recommended me to go with this route because it's the better one and I did try it and I have to say that it's definitely very good to pick up remnant offsets. And on top of that it also gives you health and shield regeneration and now I'm going to go over the augmentations on the armor real quick. As you can see over here I have shield oscillator which restores 25% shields when I kill an enemy. Uh, other than that I've put on three kinetic coils and everything else on all of the other offsets I've only put biotic recharge speed as I've said and I'm also going to go over the weapon that we're going to use this time around. So I'm going to use the Valkyr. The reason I did this is because I could stack the biotic recharge speed speed augmentations on this one and I have in total another 20% recharge speed increase so that is exactly what I want. I didn't put any other augmentation on this one because I didn't really actually need it. And now that we are done with that we're going to go over the melee weapon and the one that I'm going with here is of course the Asari sword and I know a lot of you guys are going to say that the Carefalon or the other cat sword is going to be better because it does more damage but this early on you're not going to care that much to be a glass cannon you also need a lot of survivability and the sorry sword gives you invincibility frames and enemy tracking and you're definitely going to need that this early on. Eventually you can move on to different weapons. The profile that I picked is of course the vanguard it increases the melee damage and force the biotic recharge speed which is really needed it gives us more shield and of course the siphoning strike passive which increases our shields even more and yeah that is basically it that was the build go ahead and and test it out and let me know if you enjoyed it or if you liked it. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to rape that like button. No, just fuck this shit. I'm out. Peace out. Sipping, fine